simply a kind of snapshot of some of our thinking around what we're interested in doing around sport, mm -hmm. the kind of reasons why. I think as soon as we started looking at and you know, we did the research, we thought, this is great, because this is people who are doing the stuff. Yes. I think one of the things that we, we um, have yet to do, and we talked about it before in our Green Britain Partnership um, meetings, is having kind of, I suppose it's pithy, but uh, you know, like everyday analogies around yeah. what it is that, yeah. you, know, the, you know, the football analogies around, you know, so many football pictures worth of, you know, water is you know, waste, that yeah. kind of thing, whatever yeah. it might be, yeah. but making it so it's relatable back to everyday living. And we haven't, we haven't yet done that. I mean, we, we you'd think he could just, because of the way we are, we probably could do it, we just haven't had the time to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we, we might have a few ideas for you. I mean, for us, we've always kind of, um, viewed people power as being the, the most powerful yeah, yeah. You know, mechanism. Um, I guess we got more involved in politics last year just prior to the yeah. election, which is why we produced our own 2030 vision. Um, but we're still very much at the ground of thinking people can make a difference. They just don't realise it. No. And it's how do we harness their interest mm. and their, their, their you know, if not in that way of yeah. them thinking, well, actually, I feel great about that. I've yeah. done something. I haven't mm. made a massive compromise. I, you know, I, if I come to a football match and I eat vegan food for the night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think one of the powers, you know, when we were talking about the whole sport angle, and what I've learned from working with NGOs is, yeah, it's about creating empathy, particularly between the global north and the yeah. global south. And it's about closing down the sense of difference between. Yes. Yes. And if you suddenly start looking and breaking down, you know, football, because of the nature, the global nature of the sport, now, you know, Africa and South America are represented in Newcastle yeah. and Birmingham yes, and exactly. Swansea and Cardiff. <laughs> yeah. So suddenly football provides yeah, that, it's that a very bridge. Good point, yeah. But then actually you look at cricket and you connect England with. Pakistan, yeah. India, you connect yeah, it with the whole Indian subcontinent. You yeah. take rugby and you connect yeah. Northern Europe yeah. with the Pacific. Yeah. Yeah, and the, the, there's just yeah. that connection so of shared it? interest. Yeah. When you yeah. break it down to the individual yeah. players. Yeah, exactly. You know, and, and if you can use that to suddenly yeah. again compress <coughs> this distance. Global so north, that, global south. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. you know, suddenly it's not a remote world away. Yeah. Actually, yeah. it's connected by your favourite centre forward yeah, or yeah. your opening batsman yeah. because actually yeah. he represents, he yeah. comes, he has family yeah. back yeah. in South America, yeah. in Africa. <coughs> um, so, I mean, I, I think for us, you know, the more, before we even get to football, the whole sporting yeah. thing. Yes, yeah, because you know, sport is a global family, yeah. Yeah. and you yeah. can connect it very, 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 very easily. Yeah. And addressing this issue of us in the global north creating the majority of the pollution, yes. that the yeah. global south are feeling the effects of. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, we, yeah. we felt that we wanted to, to create this connection and demonstrate a new urgency around around the issue and using sport as a yeah. medium. So. Yeah. Um, and we felt that we can we can mobilise a, a mass global audience to change yeah. change their behaviour. To potentially reach out to universities and work with Gloucester yeah. University, who's yeah. sort of connected directly yeah. with us, yeah. and yeah. Salford City, who are obviously yeah. connected with Gary, mm. um, oh, yeah. and ask them to uh, take sustainability and sport managed by me to make it work mm -hmm. yeah. so give them an opportunity to do something quite amazing yeah. largely using the communication platform of the sustainability sport website which we created at the beginning through a twitter photo campaign or whatever yeah of just persuading yeah. people to kiss the pitch yeah you know and that can be you know, I think so can get Gary back over from <laughs> the <Olympia. laughs> but you know whether or not it, you know, it, it nice, jumps across yeah. from every sport, yeah. every culture. Yeah. It's, it's a very simple expression yeah. of be grateful for this yeah. Yeah. and we're just going to start talking to you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And why you should pay attention is you love these cricket players, you love yeah. this rugby game. Yeah. It yeah. has to have a planet yeah. Yeah. to be played on. Right, yeah. uh, Paul and I emerge from advertising is we're actually storytellers. Yeah. That, that's all our job is. You know, yeah. we, we spent 15 years telling the story of Volvo cars and yes. pot noodles and stuff like that. Yeah. We've now just, you know, raised our game a bit, you know, and the stories we're telling are climate change and you know, various subjects like that. But climate change is happening at a football round near you. It, it's perhaps just joining the dots for yes, people. Yes, it is. We do need to join the dots, exactly. How 
how it will impact on the sport you love. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and it's about these lifelong inst- you know lifelong routines you've had. You know, the daily routines, the institutions, and stuff like that. Suddenly, there's something on the horizon. Yeah. And it's not like the polar bears and the melting ice no, caps. It's, it's happening at a football ground near yeah, yeah. you. The change can be awful if we don't address it. Yeah. So, you know, the Emirates with a plastic pitch, <laughs> it's only a climate change away. Now, that's a conversation starter that you will convert 99% of Arsenal fans yeah. to going, I need to know more about this. Yeah. Because they don't want their football played on a plastic no. pitch. No. Equally. Do you really want to support in the future of retractable roofs and artificial turf? You know, is it any surprise they're all now being designed to be waterproof? Mm. <laughs> now, you know, you start doing this, you start thinking, well, you know, is that, you know, do we start a conversation with Nike and sportswear company? You know, do we, yeah, exactly. they also become calling cards yeah, they do. Mm. for yeah. businesses yes, exactly. and commercial sectors in yeah. terms of interesting sponsorship opportunities, invitations to get them involved yeah. and say, look, you know, if you're a Nike or you're an Adidas, yeah, you want football played on a good pitch yeah. into the future. Yeah. So let's have a conversation about sustainability in sport. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and let's articulate it from that point of view. Now, you know, I'm a Tottenham fan, so I'm focusing on Deli Ali. But it is this idea, I read a report that you know, someone said fifty thousand hours of school football had been lost wow. because of flooding. You know, so, t- you know, 20,000 Delhi alleys, so 50,000. It was just absolutely insane. You know, so it's this thing about, you know, the Saturday morning pitches, the yeah. amateur, t- you know, yeah, yeah. where the next generation yeah. of players come up. Yeah. You know, and suddenly you connect it to schools. Yeah. You connect it to parents. Yeah. You know, the Saturday morning dads and mums who turn up. Yeah. Suddenly climate change is affecting them. Yeah. If we have the opportunity of celebrities, you know, John Terry models a future Chelsea kit. You know, we could be light-hearted with a serious point. You know, it'd be great to get half a dozen footballers in, you know, kind of those, (laughs) you know, those fishing dungarees that come up to chess level. Extremes. Um, But joking aside, it gives us a visual different from the polar bear. You know, that is a bit more immediate. And people are going to go, why is John Terry working? You go, well, actually, let me just explain something. You know what happened at Carl? It just brings the whole thing much closer. Since 1950, I, I kind of made this up, but it's the language is right. <laughs> yeah. The Solomon Islands have lost 2,000 football pitches of land to climate change. Is use familiar terms yes, exactly. to your audience, yeah. so yeah. they understand what's being lost. Yeah. Didier Drogba knows all about football. His family on the Ivory Coast know all about climate change. Now he wants, you know, there is a generation of African players yeah. who, you know, have made a lot of money yeah. coming to the end of their careers. What do they want to do? How, how do they want to pay back? Yeah. And they have a legitimate connection to stand up and talk about yeah. the experience in Africa, yeah. in South America. Yeah. You know, can we provide a soapbox, a platform for yeah. them to talk about it? Yeah, yeah. Now, I mean, we have this crazy idea of virtual matchday, matchday programmes. Yeah. You know, it, it's a small shrinking of the carbon yeah. footprint. Yeah. <coughs> but if a club just said, you know, yeah. we'll, we'll deliver it to your smartphone. Yeah, yeah. that's something we Print cards, stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Just once a month. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. Just, you know, getting people to understand yes. you're not powerless. I think this yeah. is one of the things we lost we learned from COP twenty one is it's easy for it to be overwhelming. Yes. The, oh, it's totally. this giant global totally. weather pattern. Yes. How on earth do I take yeah. it? Yeah. No, so you break it down by by sport, by club. Brilliant. Make it regional, make it local, make it yeah. personal. Yeah. Mm. yeah. yeah. Okay. In the POM website, we talk about life-size solutions. So this is about not asking people to take on big change of life things, but life-size solutions, life-size contributions, everyday adjustments to their routine that can make a difference. Um, you know, and if we can do that, you know, suddenly we've got the building blocks of something quite powerful.